Welcome back, everybody. Today we got a pretty short video, but I think it's one that I haven't seen talked about much, and it's actually a really important concept. You know, as always, if you like this kind of stuff, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like this so I make more videos like this. If you have suggestions or questions, leave them down in the comments below. I know that I try to answer everything, you know, either in the comments by commenting or by making a video. So, you know, ask away. I, I always say I really want this channel to be to help you guys out. So the more questions you ask, the more I can answer. And odds are other people have the same question. So today I want to talk about the concept of being a good lab citizen. This is a term that you'll hear, you know, every once in a while, but it's something that is actually really crucial. So what is being a good lab citizen? It basically means you conduct yourself in a lab in a professional manner, you try to help others, and you try to make sure that other people are able to conduct themselves in a meaningful way. And the more you act as a good lab citizen, the easier your time will be. Right? So there's like a golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated, sort of like being a good lab citizen. So some examples, if you ever encounter somebody that needs help in the lab, please go out of your way to help them. Try to troubleshoot their experiments with them. Try to walk them through what their problem is. You'd be surprised that over time as you do this, the amount of good karma that you build up that people become more willing to go out of their way to help you. It really helps to build relationships. Do things like if you're going to use somebody's reagents, ask first. Make sure that if you do borrow somebody's stuff that you order new and replace it. Nobody likes being in the middle of an experiment. They go to find some sort of common reagent and it's just gone, it's empty. Nobody's ordered more, nothing. It's just somebody used up the last of it and now it's gone. And in the middle of an experiment, you have to stop because the, the reagent's missing. This has happened to probably everybody that's watched this video, and it is a really, really frustrating feeling. So please don't be that person. If something's running low, order it, especially if you're gonna use the last of it. You know, And if you do use the last of it, let others know, hey, everyone in the lab, I finished the bottle of glycine. So there isn't any more glycine. However, I did put in an order and this is when it's expected to come. This way others in the lab know that it's been used and that they can work around it. Always talk nicely about the peers in the lab. Never gossip. You know, one of the fastest ways to destroy culture in a lab is to gossip about each other or make each other feel uncomfortable. Never try to talk bad about others in your lab. Always try to talk you know, positively about others in the lab. And along with that, conduct yourself in a professional manner. Even if you're a graduate student or a postdoc, treat it as a workplace, okay? There should be absolutely no tolerance for any kind of discrimination, whether it's against somebody's race, gender, sexual orientation, you know, religious, political views, nothing. Okay, that's not acceptable in the workplace. We all should treat each other as equals and as peers. Likewise, you know, be mindful of the people that you're with, you know, you, you shouldn't be making inappropriate comments or jokes that you would tell with your buddies at a bar, okay? That should be saved for when you're with your buddies at a bar. When you're at work, things should be professional. You could talk about your personal life. There's nothing wrong with talking about your kids, your spouse, your significant other, you know, the trip you took on the weekend, but you shouldn't be talking about things that aren't work-related that are inappropriate. So be mindful of who your company is. And in general, just try to treat others in a way that you would want to be treated. And I think that if more people did this, life within a lab would be a lot better. And it's kind of a shame that this is something that isn't talked about quite as much. I see a lot of people go about their day and they just treat others in the lab so rudely. And what I've noticed is the ones that do that are the ones that have um, no help in return. When they need help, nobody wants to go out of their way to help them. The ones that sit there and do everything they can to help every single person in the lab, when they have a project and they need help, every single person volunteers to help them. Of course they will, because they remember that that was the person that helped them out when they needed it. So always keep that in mind. So this is a rather short video. I don't actually have a whole lot more to discuss, but 
I really wanted to somehow bring this concept in. I felt like this is something really important and something worth mentioning. So as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You know, make sure to leave your comments down below. I'll actually ask you guys, have you guys ever met anyone in your lab experience that wasn't a good, you know, lab citizen, if you will, that treated others poorly or used up reagents or, you know, these are just some of the examples that I'm giving, but there, there's obviously more. You know, let me know in the comments below if you know someone who was not a good lab citizen and, and kind of what did it do to the, the dynamic of the lab, because I'm guessing that it made it uncomfortable for others to work there. Um, so yeah, with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.